Last March, seven biracial actresses got together to discuss their experiences in a business that is often defined by your appearance. Looking back in Hollywood history, there's either been sort of a push it to the side, don't talk about it, let the audience think what they think. If they happen to think that maybe they're just white, then, then let them think that. Or it's been um, very clear, no, she's a black American, she's a this, that. But what does the word biracial mean? It means that your parents are from two different ethnic backgrounds, and at times being biracial and identifying as such can provide a unique set of challenges, especially when it comes to being an actress. Friends in society as a whole, god damn it. I'm sorry, oh sorry, cut that, sorry. <laughs> it's almost unconscious yet conscious that I'll straighten my hair and I'll go in specifically looking more white because I know I'm on that fine line so if I just get myself looking just right and speak a certain way I can go in and I can play it off because I'm a good actor and then there are other times where I know I'm auditioning for something and I know I need to be Latina all the way so I'll do my hair a certain way and I'll put on my certain jewelry and I'll wear my certain clothes and carry myself a certain way Being an actor is really rough. Most of us are like waiters and tour guides, that's what I do, and you know, and it's um, it's a hard life, and you know, those people who make it, it's not like an overnight thing, it's like mostly like, you know, five, six years, maybe like ten years of like struggling in like crappy jobs and then finally making it. Let's not forget that uh, call time for a job usually is about four o'clock in the morning, and you're on a set floor for 14, 16 hours a day working. I mean, what's so glamorous about 14, 16 hours a day? It's exhausting. A lot of people believe that acting is a very glamorous job. They also believe that you have to be famous to be a working actor. And people ask me all the time, oh, what do you do? And I say, well, I'm an actor. And like, oh, are you on Broadway? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you in movies? No, but I make a living as an actor, and I make a good living. And even my own family, because they don't see me on television, they don't really seem to believe that I'm an actress. When I first started off back in Australia, I mean, you know, I got, like, I got my equity, we call it equity, on my SAG card, basically, from doing extra work. And that extra work involved playing either Vietnamese refugees or Japanese tourists or you know a combination of both and it was you know it was a little it was a little demeaning sometimes especially doing the whole Japanese tourist <laughs> thing because they wanted that you know that stereotype of like you know shut a bug Japanese tourists and there was an audition a couple weeks ago about a female actress uh, wanted for a terrorist <laughs> <laughs> top of Middle Eastern film. I said, no way will I go and put myself through something like this. I played a Russian, believe it or not, but I'm not Russian at all. But they, they thought I looked Russian, I guess, because of Mon like Mongolia is near there, and some Russian people look a little bit Asian. And I've played Italian, and I've played um, Spanish, um, and... A couple of times I've been sent out for Caucasian, but then like I went to this print job and I was supposed to be Caucasian and the lady said to me, you know what, no, 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 I'm going to have you try out for this Hispanic thing. Being cast in um, Neighbours, the Australian soap opera, was a really good experience that I've had so far because, um, you know, I was considered as an actor, not as, you know, an Asian girl or it wasn't an Asian character, it was just a person named Kara, that was the name of the character, and I was, you know, cast in that, and it was, and it was great, you know, I got a recurring role for like a couple of years, and it was a really fantastic experience, and I wasn't, I wasn't seen as the Asian girl, I was just, you know, the actor. But when I got here to New York, I actually thought it would be more open, there's more diversity here, and now I am totally pigeonholed, and nobody knows I'm not black enough to do the African American auditions, they look at me cross-eyed, even though I am part African American, they send me out for Hispanic, but I don't speak Spanish. And so, you know, if there's something sort of slightly ethnically ambiguous, then they'll kind of send me out for that. But I'm not getting sent out as much because they really just don't know what to call me. I, I already am finding that I don't really fit into the young African-American um, 
image that most casting directors want. I'm not dark enough. I don't really fit into, I obviously can't go out for Korean roles, even though I'm half Korean. I mean, I'd be laughed out of the room. So um, <laughs> the pool of what I have open and available to me is getting smaller and smaller, it seems. And I feel like it should be getting bigger and bigger in this era. You know, I met with a casting agent, a casting director, excuse me, and he was very encouraging and he said it, this is a good time for you you know you're by bi, the biracial thing the whole you know and it, it seemed okay like nicole said they they're sort of very upbeat about it and they seem excited to have you know a, a whole new ethnic file thing going on but at the end of the day i haven't found a casting director or an agent that really seems to push me as a multiracial actor and to send me out for different types of things they seem to pigeonhole me. And so even though mm -hmm. it's a good time for us, unless they really want to broaden their clients' horizons and send us out for things that maybe we could do, then it doesn't make a difference. Yes. So, you know, I've been acting for a while now, and people say, well, why aren't you signed with an agent? I don't understand. You've done all this work, and, you know, I don't understand. And I'm like, well, because when you go into a casting agent, I don't know how many times I've gone in there, and they just go, like, Okay, you're too ethnic to be white, and you're too this to be that, and you're too, you know. And so, like, okay, well, you know, we may be expanding our files in the next couple months. We'll call you. When it comes down to it, you know, you're either this or this, or you're not, you know. It's just it's so frustrating. I was uh, called to audition for America's Most Wanted. It was a speaking role. I traveled two hours out of the city um, to find myself being put to the side with a couple of girls who were standing by a pool table and they said, well, we're going to put you over there. After they looked me over and sized me up and I said, no, you know what, uh, I came up here to read, so, you know, can you go get me a script, please? And she went to the director's uh, room and she came out with a script, she handed it to me, I read for the part and I got it. So, and that was casting against type, totally. And so I believe that there's definitely boundaries that can be crossed and have been crossed and will continue to be crossed. I, I'm getting a new set of headshots and my goal is to make them look as ambiguous as possible because I'm not going to fit into a box and there's no way that I can make myself fit into a box. So I figure if this is my, if this is how I look, I should turn into a strength. And so I um, looked at my last set of headshots and I just thought they're kind of black, but then someone looked at them and said, well, maybe you look kind of Hispanic. I just said, you know, I'll go with it. I'll go all the way. I'll get another set and I'll make myself look like nothing else <laughs> and see where it takes me. I didn't hear the term biracial or multi-ethnic until, oh, pi past five or six years maybe. And the first mm -hmm. celebrity that I remember ever really coming out and talking about it was Tiger Woods. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking that was the most amazing thing that he said, I will not choose. And I've always felt that way, but I never discussed it with a single soul because everyone that I knew either chose black or white or whatever. When I go to these auditions that they would not ask my background or why is your name Yasmin instead of Yasmina or, or what are you from or, or what's with the accent or um, it's just it's a very uncomfortable situation that every time I go for, for just for an audition, I just want to read for yeah. you and say thank you and leave without being asked all these questions about my background. These are just very silly questions that, you know, you're here to do a job. You're not here to, to be asked these very personal questions that they have nothing to do with the work. Remember, you know, they're doing business and they're thinking of the client and, you know, if you don't, I'm not justifying. Mm their line of questioning. Yeah, it's hard, but, uh, but on the other hand, the, the, I don't know, they sh really should just look and say yes or no. I played opposite of um, a Caucasian man, and he was Italian. And it's so weird because driving home, I discussed it with the other cast members in the beginning, well, f actually for a long time, I felt like there we couldn't connect or like he didn't want me to touch him 
you know, yeah. and I and but I'm not convinced that it was true. Like I, I almost I don't know if it was really real or if I was projecting this or um, what the deal was. And it was really hard. It was really hard. I was always playing with someone that was white. And a few occasions, I actually um, played with like an older man, like in farces with like a 50 year old man. Um, but I would really like to be cast now with a, a, an African American man or, or, or a man of any race, really. Just, I think that would, it would be int more interesting, or, or at least interesting, to have to have done both. I've been fortunate because I've been cast to play alongside a black man, a white man, a Puerto Rican man, you know. And <laughs> love scenes are just, in general, just not. The funnest. I mean, they're they're you know it's just awkward. <laughs> yeah, it's just awkward. No matter what race that person is, and um, you know, I I guess I've been pretty fortunate because I've I've pretty much felt comfortable. It's been pretty cool. I mean, the the weirdest situation was uh, one guy I was cast with that looked like JJ from Good Times, and it was a play, and I didn't realize it didn't click until opening night that his name was JJ in the play and he looked like JJ from Good Times. Oh. And <laughs> like, it was a serious play. And when I said JJ for the first time, the whole audience started laughing mm -hmm. and the play was, anyway, a mess. But. <laughs>you know, was particularly that, that element of shock and surprise and her wonderful, eloquent words on stage. Really, you know, whenever the people were reading from pieces of paper and, you know, <coughs> she really spoke and, mm -hmm. and spoke for all of us. And I, I just uh, love her for that. You know, I called my mom when she won and I'm like, hey, mom, that could be me and you. Did you see her mom? Because her mom was right there next beside her. And it was very, it was really exciting. I cried. Um, and then I went to the bathroom, I tried my eyes and, and got all together because I never thought Denzel would win after Holly won. Mm. And he did, and so needless to say, mm. you know, I cried again. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was beautiful. I was flipping through the channels and I just happened to turn it on when they called Halle Berry's name. <gasps> and it was just meant to be that yeah. if I was going to see five minutes, it was going to be that. And I cried like a baby. I was so moved, and I immediately called my best friend, who happens to be a guy, just to say, wow, like, wasn't that amazing? And he, he didn't get it. And I thought, well, maybe it's because he's a man. He doesn't get how big this is for, for people of color and also for this woman. And so then, over the past few days, I've been talking to all of my other friends, who most of whom are white, and, and none of them are getting, getting it. it. Not <laughs> one of them. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. are, I know they're wonderful people. They're my friends. They don't get it because they can't. They, they don't. No. They just, and it's so frustrating. And I don't want to think that they're insensitive, and I don't want to be angry with them, but I really just, <laughs> how can they not get it? It's a big deal. It's historical. I was really happy for them, but it wasn't, it wasn't because of their race or because, oh, this is the first time. I just thought they were the best actors and that they should have won because of their acting. So, and then I had a friend um, who I spoke to about it, and I was shocked at what he said, and I, I felt like it was a racist comment, but he said, he said, oh, it was a black evening, <laughs> like what you were saying, and I was just like, I don't know, it didn't even occur to me. It just did not occur to me, because I thought they were wonderful actors. I didn't see all the movies, but I did yeah. see Halle Berry, and I thought she was, she should have won. They were, I, I, I thought mean, she deserved yeah. to win, whether she was white, black, Chinese, whatever. I spoke to my girlfriend the next day, and. and it was just, it, it was so wonderful to see not only her, but also Sidney Poitier mm -hmm. and, and Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so there is a chance. And, 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 it, and, it, and it's like planting a seed and you have to water it and you have to wait and let it grow. Mm -hmm. And eventually it will grow. I mean, eventually I will have that opportunity. No question about it. I mean, this business is run by, you know, mm -hmm. let's face it, uh, uh, people who are not like us.
it is a business and there are politics involved and whatever else, but we haven't always been recognized as part of that. And whether we like that business political part of it, it is time for us to be in the game. ultimate role is to be on a sitcom like, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, Amigos, and <laughs> it would be multi-ethnic because yeah. I don't know where they live in New York because multi New York is multi-ethnic, and on that show, I don't, I don't even what, see, yeah. I don't even see multi-ethnic no. people in the yeah. coffee shop. They've had so. a lot of New one York. Black oh, one? Oh, I had one, one Asian one. woman as well. <laughs> I just wanted to say that when I came in here and I met all of you, everyone is so um, multiracial, and I felt less multiracial <laughs> because I'm black and white. And I think recently I was, I went along with the whole like with the Holly Berry and most other people, you know, that I'm black and I relate more to that and. Um, I think it was because you didn't know that you had a choice and the whole, you know, uh, if you go with uh, multiracial or biracial, then you're weakening the voice of the other. And um, I've just really been reflecting on this and I, I think it's fantastic.